Hi, this is uh, Nicholas Fogelson of Northwest Endometriosis and Pelvic Surgery. Um, I wanted to talk about this idea of rarity of conditions and how certain physicians can go down the wrong diagnostic pathway um, because of a misperception of what is rare and what is not rare. Um, specifically, I was thinking about, there's a specific Facebook group where they talk about extra pelvic endometriosis as being not rare. And extra, extra pelvic endometriosis meaning thoracic endometriosis, diaphragmatic endometriosis, um, or renal uh, urinary tract endometriosis, um, and saying, well, they're really not that rare. And sometimes what happens is we get kind of confused about what population we're dealing with when we talk about what's rare and what's not rare. So before we talk about endometriosis, let me talk about, you know, one of the classic uh, general ideas of where people get confused about what's rare and what, what's not rare. So it's generally known that women are less likely to have heart attacks when they're premenopausal than men are of the same age. For example, a 40-year-old menstruating woman is less likely to have a heart attack than a 40-year-old uh, man. And so when men come into emergency departments with significant uh, chest pain and pain radiating into their shoulder and so forth, they are very likely to be correctly diagnosed uh, if they're having a heart attack. And the emergency department is, or the emergency physician is very likely to uh, immediately suspect that this person is potentially having a heart attack and do the appropriate workup. Um, the classic error that is sometimes made is that a woman that presents to the emergency department with exactly the same symptoms may not get taken as seriously. And she, the physician may be more likely to think that she has gastritis or that she has um, this a costochondritis or something other than a heart attack and may take it up a little bit less seriously because overall women are not that likely to have heart attacks when they're 40. And making that error is something called a representativeness error or a representativeness bias. And what that bias means is that when you look at an individual, you are biased to believe that they are more like the class they come from than they are like the specific symptoms they exhibit. And what that would mean is that the woman who says, I have crushing substernal chest painting radiating to my arm, or your picture is flipped, so it would actually be here in your picture because it usually radiates into the left arm. Um, and that patient or that woman actually has a pretty high chance of having a cardiac diagnosis because she's giving a perfect description of cardiac pain. And yet the physician under, uh, being affected by a representativeness bias may say, women aren't that likely to have heart attacks and therefore this person is not likely to be having a heart attack, even though that person is exhibiting the perfect symptoms for a heart attack. And that's a bias. Um, and so the, that same thing happens in, in relatively unusual endometriosis conditions. So let's talk about these relatively unusual endometriosis conditions. Let's talk about thoracic endometriosis, for example. So is thoracic endometriosis rare? I think from any kind of global humanity point of view, yes, it's quite rare. It's not common at all. The vast majority of physicians probably have never seen a case of thoracic endometriosis. Um, it's just not that common. Now, is it common in my practice? Yeah, it's actually quite common. In fact, I operate on probably one or two patients a month that have diaphragmatic or thoracic endometriosis. So in my practice, it's common. So when we start talking about rare and common, you have to realize that those words really are only meaning, meaningful within the context of the population of people that we're talking about. And so, again, when a woman presents to sort of a non-endometriosis thoughtful person, or a sort of a, especially if it's just a general practitioner, and she says, I have cyclic pain in my chest. Again, the mirror's flipped, so it's really over here for you. Um, usually on the thoracic endometriosis is usually on the right side. And so when she says, I have cyclic pain that's radiating into my shoulder, it happens with my menstrual cycle every time. It radiates into my neck. Maybe it radiates into my ear. Um, I also have chest wall pain. And it happens every single month with my, with my menstrual cycle. You could make a representativeness error and say that all in all, thoracic endometriosis is really, really rare. So because thoracic endometriosis is really rare, you probably don't have thoracic endometriosis. But that would be a mistake. Because even though that diagnosis in a global sense is quite rare. In the woman who has cyclic chest pain in her shoulder and in her neck and maybe in her chest wall, and it happens every month with her menstrual cycle, 
the chance that she has thoracic or diaphragmatic endometriosis is really high. In fact, it's almost 100%. And so in this concept of extra pelvic endometriosis is not rare, well, in the global sense of the word, there these, are, these, these diseases are rare. But in a specific patient who is exhibiting the symptoms of those conditions, it's actually pretty common. And so sometimes as a, as a patient, if, if you're dealing with someone, a physician who's really knowledgeable about endometriosis, like myself or, or you know, any number of other physicians, they're, they're going to believe you when you say you have those symptoms. But if you present yourself to a general practitioner and say, I'm worried I have thoracic endometriosis and I have these symptoms, or I'm worried I have cyclic flank pain and I'm worried I have endometriosis involving my ureter. And they say, well, that's really rare. I'm sure it couldn't be. You know what you should say to that physician? You should say, I understand that those conditions are rare from a global point of view. They're not very common. But in a woman who has this set of symptoms, for which you don't have any other good explanation, it's probably not as rare as you think. And that may make the physician go, hmm, oh yeah. In fact, they probably learned about these biases when they were in medical school. I certainly did. And then I went on to study them and I've actually given talks on physician cognitive biases. And this is one of those cognitive biases that allows physicians to make the wrong decision or misdiagnoses. Um, and maybe we'll talk about some other ones in, in other videos. But this concept of representativeness error is when you think that a person is more like the global class of people they come from than they are like the exact thing that they're presenting. Um, and so, you know, in short, thoracic and extra pelvic endometriosis is pretty rare. But if you have the perfect symptoms for it, it's not that rare. And I think that sometimes we see this online as well when we see women that come on to certain support groups because they have very specific sets of symptoms, um, they not uncommonly have the condition that they think they have because the very fact that they had the very specific set of symptoms that is characteristic of that condition is what led them to be in that group. And so if you go into the group where it says extra pelvic endometriosis, a lot of the women in that group actually do have extra pelvic endometriosis because they're there because they have those exact symptoms. Um, so if you do have a weird presentation that you think is endometriosis and people are telling you you don't have it because it's rare, you know, get a second opinion or tell your physician that, hey, maybe it's not as rare. Yeah, I understand that it's rare, but is it rare in a person like me who's presenting these exact symptoms? Something to think about it or something to think about.